as I said in the opening, I want to look at water baptism. Hannah will be baptized on Sunday. So, Hannah, you know, this is for you for education. Um, and an understanding of what we're doing and what is the prerequisites, what this means. But it's also a fresh um, reminder to us as believers of why it's important to be water baptized. And what does it mean? What is the importance? I'm going to be looking at a lot of scripture tonight. Um, we'll try to look together. Uh, I'll try to... Uh, I have a lot of notes when we try to just uh, hit the points that I feel are um, important for us and reminders. I'm not going to rehash a lot of things that maybe we looked at in the past. I'm going to look at what it is. We'll look a little bit about what it isn't, but I want to more uh, give an emphasis tonight on what water baptism is. And so in Matthew chapter number 28... Matthew chapter number 28, verse number 19 through 20, we find that the Great Commission is given. And so I think the emphasis of the importance of water baptism is found here. Would someone read Matthew 28, 19 through 20? So what is the great commission that God gives us? What are we to do? We're to go into all the world, that's right, and teach. And we are to teach uh, uh, all nations. And the result of this, because all power is given to us by the Spirit of God, Amen. Uh, they were to go and wait and be endued with power. Acts chapter number 2. They were endued with power. But the power was to, for them to go into all the world and preach the gospel uh, to every creature. And uh, the Bible says that they were to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. This is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This is a baptism of water because the results of their preaching and teaching has materialized and has given them souls for the kingdom of God. The power of God whereby they preach by, it's by the foolishness of preaching that men are saved, right? The Word of God says that. So the result of preaching and teaching are men are converted. When they're converted, what's the thing that, that He says for them to do? To baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. This is water baptism that they were to be baptized with. And so it's obvious that, uh, 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 that, that the, the practice of preaching the gospel and seeing souls converted, it cannot be neglected that when someone is saved that they need to be water baptized. Right? Because it is, it is the commandment of Christ. And so uh, there's an obligation that, that, that new converts need to understand this biblical view of, of water baptism and what the significance of it is in their relationship now with Jesus Christ. Now, oftentimes we find in the Bible that immediately once they're converted, they are baptized. We'll talk about that and deal with that. Uh, we, we do water baptism. We probably should do it more often. Uh, uh, but when souls are converted, when there is that uh, professing of knowing Jesus Christ and the conversion where there is that believing with the heart and the confessing with the mouth, that water baptism should be followed. So let's look a little bit about what that word baptism means because it, 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 it is a, a, a biblical ordinance. And when we say ordinance, that is something that is for us uh, a, a, a practice. Uh, I hate to say the word ritual, but it, it can kind of fall in there because it's something that we practice that is given by God for religious uh, biblical uh, uh, practice in our life. 
And so the word baptism, uh, when we look at it, the, the Greek word uh, from which it is derived in the New Testament, baptism, that means that when they translated the Bible from Greek into English, when it is, it, when it is uh, uh, translated, it comes from the word in the original text, bapto, B-A-P-T-O. And, and when we look at this word in the secular Greek dictionary, it means this. It means to dip, to dip and to die, or to draw water. Now that's in the secular Greek dictionary. But when we look at it from uh, what is translated strictly from the Old Testament, it means, uh, it only has one meaning, which means to dip. And so uh, we think about that word dip, and I could use small illustrations. Uh, uh, let me just use this as a very simple illustration for our younger uh, 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 children to, to understand when it comes to baptism. How many in here likes Oreo cookies? Come on, be honest. Yeah, they're good. They're really good when you dip them in milk, right? Yeah. So when we look at that word dip, and we think of it in a regular context to help us understand from a very simple point of view, from a, a child's point of view, it's like taking that Oreo and dipping it in milk, and then back up and it's after it's been immersed, uh, the change that transpires, right, is, is, is great. But let's look at it from a biblical perspective now, and I'll give you that kind of secular uh, just concept for our mind to grasp. Throughout the Word of God, I believe it is, and uh, it, it is, I believe, over 400 times. I'm sorry, 100 times in the New Testament, we find that word "bato," B-A-T-O, or a version of that word used. And to help us understand baptism, uh, it's very interesting. It was for me that it's the same word that is used in John chapter number 13, and I'll look at verse number 26. Everybody, turn there. And once everybody's there, then we'll read that together. We're looking at the Last Supper. We're looking at Jesus when they ask him, is it I, is it I, who is going to be the one that betrays you? Uh, there's a word, bapto, bapto, that is used here that correlates with our word, bapto, in baptism. So let's, let's look at that. In, he, in John chapter 13, verse number 26, does someone want to read that verse? Okay, so when we look here at this word, uh, it actually is two different times placed here. One is in a noun form, one is in a verb form. It does change a little bit from bapto to baptas. And so the, the verb form being found there uh, in this, we're looking once again at the word bapto, which we get baptism from in our, uh, our English language. But it is the same word that is used here for dip. It helps us understand baptism. And, and so uh, the Bible says, that uh, in verse number 26, as Sister Rachel read, uh, that, 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 that I have dipped it, amen, and when he had dipped. What does that mean? He takes a piece of bread and he sucks it. What does that mean? He dips. He puts it in there and it's like a sponge. He immerses it and pulls it back out. Dip. And so that is where we once again get our word, uh, uh, baptism, it's the same word that is used here. It means to plunge or to immerse momentarily uh, under the surface of a liquid. That's what's happening here, right? Pretty straightforward. But to help us understand that baptism and this word dip is synonymous when it is being translated from, our, from, uh, from, from the original text into our English language. And as I said, there is some form of uh, baptism um, uh, or baptized that is used over a hundred times in, in, in the New Testament. In all cases, except for three or four, give the idea of the Jewish washing. And so it is the idea of washing. It is more so not washing as in sprinkling, 
but it's washing as an immersion. Now, although there may be uh, one or two, and my mind slips me on the number where it does refer to a washing, or maybe there's not an immersion, we have to further understand Scripture to understand that baptism means immersion. And we'll look more at that in just, uh, just a little bit. Now, some people have raised the question of baptism and was it something that was a cultural thing? Was it something that was practiced even in pagan religions back then? Uh, you know, there, there is some idea, some thought that maybe uh, baptism in religion was used for medicinal purposes. We know washing ourselves is, is a good hygiene to do, isn't it? To bathe, it's good for our body. However, uh, it seems unlikely that John's baptism had anything to do with anything that was common practice of the day and age back then. And even particularly when we look at it from Scripture, we'll understand that a little bit more. But sometimes that, that's a correct question that has been raised even when I look at, and study this. And so we look at some things that are happening when we first find baptism. Who do we find baptizing? John the Baptist, his name John the Baptist. We find him baptizing. And so, how does John the Baptist baptism relate to today's baptism? It does relate, however, it's different. And so, let's look at how it's different. And so, John the Baptist uh, 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 was described as a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Someone read Mark 1, 4. Someone else read Luke 3, 3. Mark 1, 4 and, and, and Luke 3, 3. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Okay, baptism for the remission of sins. Someone else Luke, read Luke 3, 3. Uh, into all the country of outdoor preaching and baptizing of repentance for the remission of sins. All right, someone get, after I make a, a statement, someone get uh, Luke 3.16. So, by scripture that was read, and, and I didn't read all of them, but you can also read Matthew 3.11 as well. So, what we understand and what we see and, 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 and can rationalize from John's baptism, there was a need that John preached that people needed forgiveness of sins. So it was a realization that men needed their sins forgiven. And, and so, uh, but once Christ had died, amen, it was a baptism that was complete because now they had the remission or the, the, the forgiveness of sins. Up until this time, they didn't have the forgiveness of sins. And so uh, John, John he, he said this. Someone read uh, Luke 3.16. So we know that there's a baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of speaking in other tongues, but it's the Holy Ghost that does the work through Christ on the cross that convicts men of their sins, that washes away their sins, that, that makes the work of the cross alive. And now we experience a baptism of salvation because the Holy Ghost is at work. How blessed we are to have the Holy Ghost at work in our lives. And so, uh, 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 here it is that John's baptism was the first step, really the acknowledgement of knowing that I need my sins forgiven, but now this, this baptism is even greater than John's baptism because I know my sins are forgiven. I don't just realize it, but now I possess the, the, the saving knowledge that my sins are forgiven. And so, it, 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 it wasn't just exercising faith in the Messiah coming, but now we are responding to the good news, amen, that Jesus saves. And He saves me. And I'm saved. And because of that, 
the ordinance of water baptism is given and important in our lives. It's saying, I'm saved. I identify with Christ. I've confessed my sins. The Holy Ghost has worked in my life. My sins are washed away. And so, when we read the book of Acts, you'll read oftentimes that, that, that the message is preached, and then they're baptized. I'll talk a little bit later about that water baptism doesn't save us. Even though oftentimes in the Word of God, it was practiced so hand in hand. Because once there was a conversion, there was a water baptism. Like I said, I'll get to that in just a few minutes. And so, a John's baptism revealed repentance and faith. Amen. For entering the kingdom of God. But, but, but there had not been a life change. It was an outward act. And so let me just read this statement. Whereas the former was a symbolic act demonstrating the first step to spiritual conversion to Christ or repentance, Christian baptism is a symbolic act that a completed spiritual conversion, amen, has happened in Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm converted. I am a convert. I'm saved. And so, the, the, the significance, the reason. Um, it's interesting because, uh, let's turn to Matthew chapter number 3, everybody who would. Matthew chapter number 3. And... Let's start at verse number 13. Just want to read verse number 13, but through verse number 17. I, I think it's, it's very interesting that we read this. in your mind as you read the scripture. Uh, but, but I think sometimes we don't think about the prior of what's happening prior to Jesus' baptism. And so here's John the Baptist and he is baptizing. He is, he is preaching a gospel of, uh, 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 of baptism. Uh, uh, and so here it is that uh, Jesus comes to John and says, I want to be baptized. To Jesus! No, no, I need to be baptized with you! And Jesus said, no. I need to be baptized. And then he said these words. If you have a red letter Bible, it will say, Suffer it uh, to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And so some people may say, well, Jesus must not have been righteous. Well, no, that wasn't what he was saying. Uh, 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 scripture uh, uh, it proves and validates over and over again the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So it wasn't that, 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 that he was needing to be righteous, amen, because uh, Christ didn't have the need. But, but why was Christ, why, why was he baptized then if, 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 if uh, he was already righteous? Well, that's an interesting question. And I think that it's the same reason why we need to be baptized. Because everything about Christ's life was about obeying the Father. Obeying the will of the Father. And so it is obedience on Christ's part when we, when we look at this. Uh, I have several scriptures marked. However, you can just jot them down if you want. But, but they all correlate with Jesus saying he was about doing the Father's will. And that's in John 4, 34. Um, uh, then John 10, 18. 
John 15, 10. Let me just read verse number 34. Uh, the Bible says, Jesus saying, My meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. And so it was God's will for his son to be baptized. It was obedience to the Father. Because what did God the Father do? We see here that Jesus is being baptized. The, 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 the cloud as a dove, the Spirit of God descending, and God the Father speaking, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And so the significance of this is a few things. Number one, this is the marker of Christ's ministry. If we have a marker of when Christ's ministry starts, it is right here at His baptism. And, 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 and it will be the same place where these men who saw Him be baptized when they found a replacement would come back to this marker. And so it speaks something about lifelong service. And so this being water baptized is also speaking that my life has been changed by Jesus Christ. And I've made a profession of faith in Him. And it is a marker of of a lifelong service unto Christ. And so this is the marker where, where I place it. And then, then the second thing that I think is obvious is, uh, is the thing that we were probably already thinking before I got here, is that Christ set the standard for us submitting to baptism so that no one has an excuse to say, well, I don't need to be baptized because Jesus has set the example for us. Right. And so when Hannah Elizabeth, you're baptized on Sunday night, you're doing it because Christ has already set the standard and the marker. And because God desires for you to be baptized. It's in alignment with the scripture. Now, let me just say, and I'm, I won't do a lot on this, and we, we would hear this more so many of you in days gone by, but when you speak of baptism, there is two baptisms spoken of in the Bible. There is water baptism, and then there's a baptism of the Spirit uh, with, with initial evidence of speaking at other times. And, and you know, in, in a day and age of controversy, the Scripture is still most, when we look at the Word of God, the thing that shows us being filled with the Spirit of God is the evidence of speaking in other tongues, uh, the initial sign of evidence. And so when we look at water baptism and its purpose, probably the thing that is forgotten in the world when they look at water baptism is that its primary purpose is to function as a biblical way for people to profess that Christ has saved me. This is our way of showing the world Christ has done a work in me. The message that was pre preached by Peter was repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sin. My wife and I was having an interesting conversation and I appreciate what she had to say. You know, some people look at their life and it's easy if you're raised in church or around the things of God just to say, well, I'm saved. Because some folks identify with the church, some folks identify with um, church attendance. Uh, it's, it's an expression of I belong. So I've been attending this, 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 this uh, church. I've been uh, worshiping there. I've been learning there, but that is not a marker of salvation. My wife said, for, and, and this is, was a fresh reminder to me, I remember where I got saved, I remember that place. My wife said, I remember, even though I was raised in church, even though I may have professed to be saved, there was one morning where a salvation message was given, and I went forth, and I gave my heart to Jesus Christ. And I knew that I knew that I knew that I was saved. We need those markers in our lives. And so water baptism isn't about just attending church 
Water baptism is about, uh, I belong to a, a, a group of believers, and they believe in water baptism. It's an ordinance and, 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 and a practice in the church. It's not about that. It's about a relationship with Jesus Christ that says this, Amen, God, I enter into this baptism because it is a symbol that not on the outside I'm submerged in water and I come up in newness of life because it's only a, a sign of what's already happened on the inside. I was a dead man or a dead woman, but then I came to you and I confessed my sins. I, I reached out in faith to you, believing that you did the work of the atonement work on the cross of Calvary and, 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 and as my heart believed in faith my lips confessed amen and, 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 and as that work was done amen because it is an act of the forgiveness of sins my my sins have been washed away I'm forgiven and I want the world to know that by this act of baptism God's done a deep work inside of me amen that profession of faith. And we see that in the New Testament. John, the forerunner of Jesus Christ. And then we hear the message being preached all throughout the book of Acts. You see John, uh, you see, I'm sorry, Paul referencing and talking about it. I'll get more to, to that in just a few moments. And so it is, it, 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 it's the New Testament marker, amen, where a person which has professed Saving faith. Amen. They, they participate in a personal experience of water baptism that is done by the Word of God baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. So, much in alignment that water baptism is a physical symbol of our spiritual salvation. A physical symbol of our spiritual salvation. In Romans chapter number 6, I just want to turn there for a moment. And I want to start verse number 1. I can jump down to verse number 2. But what, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall that we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into, into His death? Therefore, we are buried with Him by baptism into His death that the likeness as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so also uh, should we, should also we, so we also should walk in newness of life. Amen. It is a physical act of what has happened spiritually in us. And so it is, it is that symbol that when we go down, we say, I have died with Christ. And I am resurrected in newness of life. There's new life in Christ. That old man, he's dead. That part of us that was spiritually dead, he's now alive. And, and, and so as we continue to look at this, it, it also demonstrates of being identified with Christ. I identify with Him. Amen. And so when God looks at our physical act of water baptism, He looks and He sees Christ's death where we should have died. But He recognizes His Son's death. And therefore, it is Christ's death that God sees and He accepts that as the penalty of our sin. How awesome. So Hannah Elizabeth, when you're baptized, and on Sunday night, you are submerged in the water, and you come back up. It is identifying with Jesus Christ. Jesus took my penalty of sin. And God sees this 
that his son took the penalty. And now I'm resurrected in newness of life, the life that is found in Jesus Christ. What an awesome act. So once again, some things that are important. It is that we are saying to the world, Jesus Christ is saved. The message of the gospel has touched me. The Holy Ghost is living in me. Christ is alive in me. And I make that profession of faith. But it's also saying, and now I identify with Christ. There's no better identity in Elizabeth to have than Jesus Christ. In a world full of labels and names, And Brother Doug, when we were growing up, it didn't matter what, what kind of jeans you wore. Now you've got to have that label on it. That means everything. Man, people want that label. Sister Doc, Walmart brand just won't do for some. they got to have that. <laughs> they got to have that label. Right? But it's saying in a world where people want to identify a lot of things by label. Some folks need to identify by rubbing shoulders with particular groups. Or they want to identify by a particular uh, piece of paper, their education or whatever. But God says, your identity needs to be Christ. And this water baptism is the best brand that you can have because I identify with Christ. It's also a public reflection of our membership into the church of Jesus Christ. Someone look up Galatians. Let's just all turn there. Galatians chapter number 3 and verse number 26 and 27. to know that someone is professing their relationship with Jesus Christ, but it is also an assimilation of showing that they're engrafted into the family of God. I know that that comes through salvation. It doesn't come through water baptism, but it's an outward expression of saying, I identify with the people of God. Amen. I'm part of the family of God. Amen. I'm part of this local church. I'm, 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 I'm being baptized in, 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 in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But also, it brings you into a place of responsibility. Because you're not really saying, I'm a partaker in Jesus Christ. I'm identifying as a brother or sister with the family of God. And with that, comes privileges, but with that comes responsibilities. We have responsibility as the people of God, amen, to be faithful, to pray for one another, to be accountable to one another, amen, to grow in the grace and knowledge of God together, amen, to exhibit the fruits of the Spirit together, amen, to see revival, to stand for righteousness, and so water baptism is identifying our membership into 
the church of Jesus Christ. He also not only identifies us with Christ, and not only expresses our, our salvation, but it is also for us a commitment to Jesus Christ. Amen. It's a commitment. It's putting the stamp on. It's going farther and saying, I've made a commitment to Jesus Christ by my, my, my praying to Him. But it's also a commitment to show that I'm going the extra mile in doing what He has already established for me to do. Although you're coming into the family of God and you're part of that and there's responsibilities and privileges, most of all, you're doing this for Christ because it's your commitment to Him. I think that we probably already answered uh, the question, you know, when should someone be baptized? And I think it's when they get saved. <clears throat> For the sake of time, when you look at scriptures, particularly throughout the book of Acts, uh, you're going to find that uh, when the gospel message is preached, uh, particularly even on the day of Pentecost, Amen. Uh, and, and throughout there, uh, you'll find that they are professing, uh, confessing and professing, but they're also being water baptized. Uh, someone sh who, who is being baptized, uh, I think it's important for us to look at some questions and say, what was my life like before I got saved? You know, my priorities were different. My attitudes were different. Some people, their lifestyles completely different. Looking at that, uh, it's a good time to look at the circumstances, the people who brought you uh, or were instrumental in, in allowing you uh, to be exposed to the gospel and you getting saved. And Elizabeth, particularly, it's a good time to be thankful for parents that make you uh, uh, that. Uh, erase that. For parents that teach you and train you in the way of righteousness. For a church that is a support to you. Uh, those, those are good things to look at. And uh, the change that's, that's, that's happened. And examine what are the reasons why I'm not baptized. It's good for us each to do that. And hopefully they align up in accordance with the word of God. Once again, I, I want to say that even though salvation and water baptism are so closely intertwined in the Word of God, it is not necessary to be saved, or not necessary to be baptized to be saved. Uh, some, some churches preach that. Now with that in mind, I do believe that God has orchestrated and God has uh, commanded us to be baptized, following His example, looking at the Word of God, seeing the benefits that are given to us through the Word of God. It is, it is important to be water baptized. But someone may say, well, my friend, my family, they, they got saved, but they did get baptized. Uh, uh, you see, we can never, we can never, ever, ever be saved through our works. The Word of God says this, uh, that it is faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe in Romans 3.22, and that uh, we have been saved through faith, uh, that, that it is not from ourselves or from our righteousness. It is a gift of God. No one can boast in that. It is simply by the grace and the mercy of God that we are saved. And so to say that what we commonly know as the sinner's prayer, amen, to accept Jesus in our heart, not to repeat after someone else, but to have that experience where the Holy Ghost is working and moving in our life. And we pray it because we are convicted and we see our need and we place our faith in Jesus Christ. Salvation 
is purely of the grace of God and not of our works. Amen. Water baptism is the New Testament way of expressing our saving faith. I think that's the best way I can express it. Water baptism is the New Testament way of expressing the saving faith that has transpired in our heart. I see the time. I'm trying to hurry. Once again, uh, the thief on the cross. Uh, uh, he, he, Jesus said, this day you shall be with me in paradise. Uh, where, when, 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 uh, uh, I'm going to, I can hit some of this other stuff later. Baptism is this. Baptism in a lot of churches, and when we look at particularly the Catholic churches, some Protestant churches, we've talked about this before, but I've spent a lot of time on this. Uh, Protestant churches such as uh, Lutheran, Presbyterian, uh, that's a thing that comes to mind right now, a lot of Reformed churches um, hold to the practice of um, infant baptism or sprinkling. Number one, we don't see sprinkling in the Word of God. It's not consistent with what baptism is. I'll quickly talk about that in just a few moments. Uh, there is nothing in the Word of God about that infant baptism. Uh, uh, some people believe that, uh, particularly in these denominations, they believe that uh, it actually converts uh, infants and putting them into a saving relationship with God. There's a lot of folks that when they have babies in the hospital, they're going to be baptized. That baby's going to die. Get here baptized. That baby. They baptize them in the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. God, Father, Son. There's nothing biblical based about that. Um, and uh, once again, sprinkling. Uh, we believe that there's an age of accountability, uh, the grace of God that comes. That's a whole other topic. That's a whole other theological debate that people have. I'm not going to get into that this evening, but we hold to that. Uh, a lot of that comes from the Abrahamic covenant of circumcision, uh, which we find was something in the Old Testament. It is not uh, the same in the New Testament. The, the baptism certainly is a sign of the new covenant. Uh, and so, uh, once again, I'm just going to skip it here so we can to try to get Alright, so let me kind of wrap things up with this. Let me say this. There's only one baptism too. Paul deals with this. Remember Paul said, you were talking, he was talking to the church and Picture in the heart and one himself. So we like Paul's baptism, uh, Peter's baptism, Apollo's baptism, uh, but there's only one baptism, and that's Jesus Christ. So it does, we're, we're not being faithful and true to the person who baptizes us, we're being faithful and true to Jesus Christ, who's, who's uh, instituted baptism. And that's who we're baptized into, and we should be desirous to follow after Christ. <clears throat> when we look at baptism and the example, what's that? Correct. That's why he was baptized. We let people know he has to be baptized and so we have to be baptized. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Amen. I think the best way to wrap everything up, and I can give you the information you can study it more if you like, is that when we go back to that word, baptize, it means to immerse for death. So the biblical way that we see baptism is, and there's nothing wrong with having a baptism. Well, if you have one and you can do it in the middle of winter, praise God. But in, in, in the New Testament, they baptized in the river, didn't they? So we see that idea of immersion, the dipping. We also see Philip when he uh, preached in Acts. He goes down river. Yeah. So the idea given to us of immersion, the idea of knowing that we have been crucified with him, fallen, we have died with him, but we're resurrected in the newness of life. And so uh, the strongest argument that we can have is looking at the word of God is immersion. 
once again, let me just say this in closing because I think this is sometimes something that I've been asked. Um, more so from people who believe in sprinkling or pouring of water. But baptism is for people who are alive. And it's not for the dead. Uh, and we cannot, we found no biblical place, sorry for all the Mormons and their practice, but we find no place in the Word of God where someone got baptized for another person or someone who maybe was close to the relationship and didn't get baptized before they died, we find nothing in the Word of God supporting that. So baptism is for the living who identify with Jesus Christ and they identify and they commit by the water of baptism. I've said a lot probably a lot more said, um, but hopefully tonight that helps us understand and empowers us to understand what is baptism, why do we practice it. It is not clock, um, just so you know that, I'm sorry, I took more time than what I thought, but hopefully for Hannah and Elizabeth particularly, this was informative and helpful to you, and hopefully it was informative to the church. It's your time, so if you want to say something,